Check your mic, it's all set. Oh, no, it was not plugged in, maybe? I, I had to switch it to okay. the other plug. I forgot the other plug. Oh, it's for the VAP. Yeah. Yeah. And I double checked yours, too. but um, And I turned them down because they were all the way. So I, they're down to where we were rehearsing. So our sound guys are here. Yeah. All of this is turning off. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning, and welcome to the Guilford Community Church, and welcome to those who will be watching at some point today. If you are seated near the center of the aisle, please sign our registration book. If you're not on the church email list and would like to be included, please include your email when you sign in. And then immediately following our worship service, we're going to have a special meeting. It should take just a few minutes to vote on the list of committee members and committee chairs. It will take place right here. And then after that, Coffee Hour is hosted by our awesome Care and Concern Committee. And we do need one more adult volunteer to help us with the summer mission trip, which is the first week of July. And there is, there is one requirement, you need a beating heart. But if you, if you qualify, we'd love to have you join us. See me if you have a question. And then this Tuesday at 9.45, the Guilford Police Department will be here conducting a safe church seminar. And I think that's something that would be really, really important for a number of us to participate in. And we have lots of li lilies. You're invited to take one as you leave this morning. I think that is it. Let's just take a moment to reflect why, on why we've gathered here today.
Thank you, Judy and Jane. That was beautiful. Please stand and join me in our call to worship. Life burst forth in the beauty of creation. Life erupts from the darkness of despair. Hope abounds in the promises given. Joy springs forth and sorrow ends. Strength is found to face every tomorrow. The world and all that is in it glows with glory. And remain standing as we sing together hymn number 253, Yours is the Glory, Resurrected One. Please be seated and join me in a word of prayer. We greet and welcome this morning. We receive it as a gift. We have gathered here for many different reasons. To give voice to our gratitude. To acknowledge life's struggles. To share life in community. To see friends. To make new ones. To rejoice in the beauty and wonder. To offer up lament to be inspired by beautiful music. So during this time, may we offer ourselves with humility, honoring those truths which bring out the best of us. As though who would wrap this world in love and peace, we commit ourselves. And in the spirit of Jesus, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, for those of you who know, I haven't been here in a while, mea culpa. Uh, so for you who know, who know me, my name is Grace. And for those of you who don't, it's still Grace. <laughs> so the reading this morning is the King James Version of the Book of John. Chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the, where the apostles, disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be with you. And when he hath done so, said so, <laughs> He shrewed unto him his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whose sins soever ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said, saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So ends the reading.
after weakness, crown after cross, sweet after bitter, hope after fear. making all things new. Springs of living water shall wash away each tear. He is making all things new. Sight after mystery, O Son, after rain, joy after sorrow, peace after to Thank you, Matt and AJ, Pammy, Cindy, and Carol, and that was beautiful. And if Melody and April will come up, you're going to have your time with me. Well, once again, the two of you have come to my rescue. Thank you so much. <laughs> My heart always beats very quickly until I see your two pretty faces come here, but thank you for lighting the candles and for coming up this morning. So, every morning when I first get up, I first get up, I go down to the main floor and I look through this window, it faces the west, 
It's a beautiful window facing the west, and I see the sun rising. And it, it is always is a wonderful way to start the day. What do you think about that? <clears throat> Any problems with what I just said? I look out this westward window, and I see the sun rising over our pine trees. It's beautiful. The sun what? The sun sets in the west. So, there, I have a problem, right? What would my problem be if I see the sun looking out my westward window? I think maybe that window faces the east. What do you think? But then something else happened yesterday. Cindy and I were taking a walk, and we take a walk almost every day. In fact, I talk about walking in my sermon, and we were right on Hoyt Street, um, right outside our neighborhood, and we saw this incredible polar bear scampering up in the woods. And I, I reached to grab my phone to try to take a picture, and it was gone. But it was this huge, have you, you probably have seen polar bears around Guilford. <laughs> why, why, now I know when we lived in Gunstock Acres, I saw black bears. Why, why wouldn't I have seen a polar bear? They live in the Arctic? I don't know, part of last winter kind of seemed like the Arctic to me. <laughs> so you don't believe the sun rises in the west, or that we saw a polar bear, but I know you will, and you'll be happy for me. I got a, a text message yesterday from Carnegie Hall. That's a, a famous music venue in New York City, and guess what? They want me to come and sing. <laughs> but they did say it was to a, a hearing impaired audience I'd be singing. <laughs> so you didn't believe any of those things. Well, in our gospel reading, we were introduced to a person known as Doubting Thomas. And for many Christians, Doubting Thomas is not a good figure, but I love Doubting Thomas. It is important to doubt and to have questions. And when someone tells you they saw the sun rising in the west, to do exactly what you do, doesn't the sun set in the west? So two important questions. Whenever you hear something like that, who told you and how do you know? So I hope as you grow up that you'll have a faith that allows you to ask a lot of questions. Okay? Awesome. Now I think you're going to meet your mom for Sunday school. Great. Have fun. It can't run and it can't hide 
If you breathe these words, then you know you'll survive. When I breathe in, I'll breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I'll breathe out love. When I breathe in, I'll breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I will breathe out love. When And I'm out of control I clear my mind as I think on a cure And I center as I make love my goal Is war really the answer? Can we find those to blame? All we're saying is give peace a chance And I pray to God as I sing this refrain When I breathe in Thank you, choir. That was awesome. <clears throat> As we take a moment to quiet ourselves and to breathe in, I do have some people I'd ask you to keep in your thoughts and prayers and families. Uh, Angela Stone is in the Taylor community under hospice care. And then keep the Pegg family and Wendy Davidson's family in, in your prayers. Bob Pegg died on Friday, as did Judy Roy. So some real wonderful church members no longer with us. And as we learn date, uh, deals, dates, <clears throat> we'll keep you posted. So please join me now in a word of prayer. We open and hold in our hearts the sorrows given voice this morning. As members of one human family, we grieve with those mentioned. And we also call to mind those who are not with us here this morning, whose claim on our compassion and concern is as real, and whose joys and sorrows are as great. Here and now we pledge ourselves to grow in compassion, to help one another as we are able to love and embrace the world. For, in for indeed, we live in a world of surprise and beauty, of challenge and delight, a world that, of anxiety and alleluia. We are lifted and fed by the wonder of it all, humbled and laid low by life's tragedies, in the interwoven moments of its blessings and blight, we make our lives. May we, in the spaces between sorrow and delight, in those moments between harsh reality and beauty, in the fear that lies in wait between truth and possibility, let us learn the art of making light, that we might shine with peace and live with hope together on our journey. Let us face whatever comes with dignity, courage, and grace. This is our prayer. Amen.
And now stand as we sing together hymn number 43, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. my greatest assets and also one of my biggest liabilities is that I am predictable. Now daughter Katie finds this tremendously boring. She may have a point. Every week, right after coffee hour, Cindy and I, we take a walk. We usually stroll through the village and we talk about the service who we saw, who we didn't. We almost always bump into over at the Village Knowles, Betsy McAfee, who week after week apologizes for not being in church. <laughs> and Cindy's excellent at remembering all the things I goofed up, and so we usually review that list, which takes us to the end of our walk. But we try to remember the names of the visitors, and something, sometimes we say things I'm glad you'll never get to hear. Like this morning, we'll probably say, what did you think of AJ's haircut? <laughs> now, on one of these walks a few years ago, we bumped into someone from the church, and that happens quite often, and we chat for a few moments, and, and then on that occasion, the person said, Michael, I don't know what you're going to think about this, but I have to tell you. Now, it's important to know that the last few, few years for this person have been brutal beyond belief. And so she, be, she began, 
And actually, I've had conversations like this the last three or four years with a number of people. But my friend hooked me up with a medium, and you won't believe what happened. Probably right. <laughs> the medium, she continued, mentioned three specific things that would have been hard for her to know. Then she added, the medium mentioned a Michael from the North who is a spiritual presence in my life. And she was positive that was a reference to me. Now, let's be honest. Any medium who thinks I'm a spiritual guiding light in a person's life is probably not to be believed. But besides that, what do you think? Where do you stand? I'm guessing probably no one lost sleep last night over the question, do you or don't you believe in mediums? But here's where I've been on that issue. During my theologically conservative years, especially my years as a fundamentalist Christian who took the Bible literally, I would have quoted two passages from the book of Leviticus. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritualists, for you will be defiled by them. And then I'd have added, a man or a woman who is a medium must be put to death. Now, even in my most biblically literal days, I probably wouldn't have supported killing a medium. Stoning, that was the preferred method for dealing with spiritualists and mediums and actually adulterous women and disobedient children. I certainly would never have supported killing the Long Island medium, but I would have either thought she was a nutcase or maybe in cahoots with the dark side. And then a bit later in the next chapter of my life, after seminary and graduate school, when my thinking had really evolved and I was better educated and certainly more enlightened, but with enlightenment came a certain skeptical perspective. So in my early 30s, I would have dismissed it as silly, a relic of a time when we were much more superstitious and less rational. A medium, I probably would have said, was just another quirk trying to make a quick buck. But now, in my post-enlightened phase, when I don't know nearly as much as I used to, I think I would probably say, who knows? Here's what I do know for certain. People have different gifts and talents. Many of you will remember Connor Leggett or Martin Snow, two of our youth, now adults. Connor will graduate this spring from Harvard and Martin has a PhD in mathematics, but from the time they were little squirts, math came easily to them. In middle school, they were doing high school calculus, while their peers, like I would have been, were struggling to do simple addition. And other, other kids excel at sports. I bet you've seen that clip of Tiger Woods when he was about four years old on the Mike Douglas show. It was unbelievable. And then, do you know the name Tori Amos? Yeah. Tori Amos. She taught herself piano at the age of two. I think I was still wearing a diaper. She won a full scholarship at Johns Hopkins at the age of five. And we all know Mozart. When he was four, he began composing serious mu music. And when we visited Salzburg in Munich, we visited his birthplace and other places he played as a child in front of royalty. So while my default position is always, always to be skeptical, I'm also learning to be a little bit op more open to things I don't understand or things I haven't experienced. So my hunch is, is that there are some people who can see and understand things in the world or not in the world that I don't. The second Sunday of Easter, we always read about Doubting Thomas. And as a child growing up Catholic, and then later <clears throat> as a fundamentalist Christian, Doubting Thomas was a villain. To call someone a Doubting Thomas was like swearing them out. And then during seminary and graduate school, doubt was enshrined not to doubt a text or a story or a tradition, was to to, to suggest that you were a simpleton, 
a person relying on blind faith, not reason. And then a bit later, at almost 64, I'm perfectly fine not having an opinion about lots of things. Don't you hate it when a person has to have an opinion about everything, especially things they don't know a thing about? (laughs) So the real test for me today is a simple one. You might want to write this down. Does what you believe help you sleep at night and live better when you're awake? And by better, I mean with the realization that you and I are not the center of the universe. And then, how does what I believe and how does what I do affect others? Does my life make your life a little better, a little easier? Nothing profound. Nothing you'll find on a Hallmark card. But it works for me. Can you sleep well at night and live well during the day? I'm trying to be more comfortable with question marks than exclamation points or periods. For Jesus, what mattered is quite simple, to love God, love your neighbor, to love yourself. And I appreciate what someone has said, everything I am uncertain about, everything I have big doubts about, I put in my mental box labeled, awaiting further light. My box is about that big, (laughs) awaiting further light. How liberating to know that we don't have to know everything. If I had to summarize my faith this morning, I'd probably put it the way Philip Simmons did in his marvelous little book called Learning to Fall. Our book group read it a few years ago. There is something of significance in the universe, and there is a way to be connected to that. That way is found in being open to paradox. It is found in the giving of ourselves. It's found in being grateful and compassionate. It is found wherever and whenever love is encountered or offered. And so this morning I say, blessed are those of you who are at peace with what you believe. But blessed too are the curious who do not rely on faith who do not settle for half-truths. Blessed as well as those are those who pry and poke, snoop and explore, who question doctrine and doubt. And blessed are those who just don't know what in the world they believe. So wherever you are today, wherever you are today, I hope you sleep well tonight. Not this morning. <laughs> tonight, and then live well tomorrow. Amen. And now stand as we close this service singing hymn number 433, In the Bulb There is a Flower.
in just a few minutes, we'll have our special meeting right here. Having gathered together for worship, may we go forth in the great spirit of love, curiosity, and humility. Amen. Friday, getting this so you could read the um, slate of officers, but we've mailed them out for the last two weeks, so I, I'll assume that everyone here was responsible and looked over the list. Yes. And if you were irresponsible and didn't, please raise your hand. Okay, shame on you, you can leave. <laughs> but seriously, we're here, to, um, uh, Sue, Sue Ross is the chair, the vice chair of the church council, and the Strategic Planning Committee, and is serving as this morning's meeting moderator. Good morning.
morning. Thank, thank you all for being is here. It on? Sarah. Yeah, it is. It is on. Okay. Oh, there you go. Good morning. This is my first first time holding one of these meetings. So, thank you all for being here and for staying for the special meeting. The agenda this morning is a simple one. I think we'll be done by maybe one o'clock. We should be out of here. Um, no, it's uh, the special meeting is called uh, to order to approve the list of committee members for 2023. As Michael mentioned, the list has been published. Um, we were hoping to have it for you this morning, but um, we do not at this point. Um, many of you have said you've already re reviewed the list, so I would like to ask for someone to make a motion, please, to accept the committee members for 2023. So do I have a second? Second. second. Excellent. Thank you. Are there any questions? Discussion? If you're in favor of the list of committee members for 2023, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> that was easy. Thank you. And a big thank you to Mae Stewart. She puts a lot of time in. Um, this is quite a process. Thank you, Mae. Thank you. And more importantly, if your name isn't on that list and next year you would like it to be, we would love to have you, uh, please reach out to me anytime. She's very good at putting people where, you know, where they want to be, but also finding a place um, that you can you know, do, do some work you'd like to do. So thank you all. And I believe coffee hour is waiting for us. Okay. Move to adjourn.